JT Tompkins got a second polygraph to prove his innocence. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team family. And let me just say thank you. Thank you all the new subscribers, all the new members, all the people who comment nonstop and are interactive on the channel. I so appreciate all of you and I'm humbled by it. But if you're not a subscriber, you should be because it's free and all you gotta do is click that button. So click it and become part of the team and family. Now I have to give credit where credit is due. First and foremost, there was someone who commented asking, why are we not, why am I not covering the JT Tompkins second polygraph? And I was gathering information before I did this. I know Cerebral did this video a few days ago and he did a great job, but I also wanted to do my due diligence and look into it. So I reached out to JT and asked some questions. And while it took a few days to get everything going, or maybe a day and a half or two days, I still wanted to hear from him before making a video. But it is right. We had set a precedent when, when we were calling it when he was disqualified. And now that he's made this second one, it should be given the same amount of respect and the same amount of time in another video. So if you're unaware, JT made another short video explaining that he went to, or he went outside and got a second polygraph so that he could prove his innocence. If you don't remember, he was disqualified from the St. Lawrence River for failing his polygraph. And right off the bat, Bass uses polygraph to test their anglers to see if they're telling the truth or if they are if they have false polygraphs. This is something the anglers know about. This is something they sign a contract that they will abide by and that this is the way Bass does their business. Does it mean it's admissible in court? Hell no. We all know that. But this is the way Bass does things. And if you sign up to be an elite angler or you sign up to be in their tournament, you abide by their rules or else you just don't fish. So JT had to do this this polygraph for bat, from Bass. And when he failed it, they instantly jumped and went in to disqualify him. And when I started writing my notes down that are in front of me, I started, I wanted to hear from JT. But I also want to ask you the same questions that I asked him. And I want you to put yourself in his shoes and answer my questions in the comments below and tell me what you think is happening. All right, guys, I know everyone has been waiting for a response, and I hate that it's taken this long to get back to y'all. But knowing that I was innocent, I had to get a second opinion. So I reached out to Daniel Rebikoff, who is one of the top investigators and polygraphists in his field. After lining up schedules, I flew to Florida to take an exam with him, and I wasn't to throw off. I passed with flying colors. Now, if you don't know about Dan Rubicon, he is a professional polygrapher that has been in the business or an expert for 40 years. He actually has published works that's used throughout the industry in all, all facets of Secret Service, defense, everything. He is an expert. And while he has a little bit of a shady background with some of the stuff he's done as a TV personality, he is an expert in this field. And I believe that JT failed that polygraph because of things that happened before he was an elite angler. Because he will admit that he did go out and get waypoints. As much as it's wrong, and I agree with that, it wasn't out of bounds or off limits for him as an open angler. As an elite angler, it would be. But as JT did it, he was allowed to. Even though I think a majority of people would say it was wrong. He was allowed to, so he didn't break any rules. But when he was asked that question, that question probably made him fail the Bass polygraph. Or that's what I believe anyway. So one of the questions I asked JT was, what was his ultimate goal for this second polygraph? And he explained to me that it was all about proclaiming that he was innocent, that he did not do anything wrong. Which then brought in the next question, even though you might prove yourself innocent here, do you really think Bass can do anything about it? And Bass, isn't going to do anything about it. You can't go back in time. You can't give him points. You can't give him money. What they did was right in their eyes. Now, did they jump to a conclusion too fast? Possibly. But all the anglers know this is the precedent that they've set for all these years. And if they have a false question or they question the legitimacy of that angler's response 
and they fail that question, then they have to do what they have to do. They had to disqualify him. Another question I asked him was, did you lose sponsors because of this? And he said yes. Now, he wasn't able to appeal the process or appeal the decision that Bass had made because the tournament was still ongoing. And instantly, he went from that day having weight to having a zero, which put him outside of the, the opportunity to fish the next day. But was he better off leaving this alone or just moving on? That's one of the questions I would ask you. Now, in the time that we've had that tournament till now, while it's still probably brought up a little bit, it isn't the big news. There's always been something else that's happened afterwards. And I'm not sure personally that I think this was the right thing to do. I understand that you want to prove that you're innocent, but if you're proving yourself innocent and can't get the sponsors back or Bass can't do anything because they're not going to do anything, then I don't know if this was the right thing for him to do. But what do you think? Do you think it was right for him to, to do this and prove his innocence? And hopefully this will allow anglers to have a better understanding about how things are worked with polygraphs. Because how a, a question is worded can drastically affect about getting a false tick or a pro tick. Because let's just be real honest here. How many anglers have passed polygraphs because they believe or that they are telling the truth, even though they might not be telling the truth. But how the question is asked can have either a pro or a con to that exact question because the way the question is worded. For example, there's so many anglers recently that we've seen snag fish. And when they bring that fish up, they turn their back to the camera and unhook that fish, throw that hook back into the water, and then turn around and show you that bass. And we don't know if that hook is actually in the fish's mouth. Because if it isn't in the fish's mouth, it's a snagged fish. And when you're in the heat of competition, you want to catch that big fish. But how the question is worded could have had a big impact on if it's true or false on that angler's polygraph. Just by the way it's worded. For example, and I have to read it because an angler sent this to me exactly. Did you snag that bass versus did you willingly snag that bass while sight fishing? Same question, asked two different ways, can get two different answers on the polygraph. It is the same answer, but that might have a different result on the polygraph. And I think that in this case, JT has set the precedent that says maybe the questions aren't asked properly. Maybe the questions need to be more direct and more straightforward so that the polygraph really does make a difference. Because if you were to ask him the same question about getting gathering information or gathering waypoints, and if you asked the question, did you gather waypoints for this tournament? He would have said no, he probably would have passed. Did you gather waypoints during the off season when you were allowed to? Yes, he probably would have passed that one too. How that question is worded through Bass is probably why JT failed that polygraph. So I'm gonna ask some questions to you right now because I'm sorry that JT lost his sponsorships because that stinks. I'm sorry that he's had to go through this because as a brand, this has hurt him. And while I think he's a great angler and can move on from this, my first question is, should he have went this far? Should he have gone to this extent or should he have just moved on from it? So that's the first question. My second question is, what do you think Bass should do? We can all agree or disagree, Bass isn't gonna do anything. But can they change the way they do things in the future so that this doesn't happen? What does Bass do? Second question. Third, should Bass be relying on polygraphs as much as they do? We've proven that it's wrong here and that if you word it wrong or word it differently, it can have a whole different result. So should, should Bass be putting so much importance on a polygraph? And last, did Bass jump to a conclusion too fast? Should they have done more work and looked into it or asked the question differently? Or should they have allowed him to retake the polygraph right then and explain why he didn't pass that question or questions? Do we need polygraphs in bass fishing? I feel like we do. I know that's probably 
hypocritical in this whole thing, but I think there needs to be something that we can put down and say, you know, you fail it, you're going to be disqualified. Because when there's so much money up for grabs and you're paying to play to go into fishing tournament and more, I think you need to have something that helps the guys that are doing things right. And I'm not saying JT is doing anything wrong at all. But I do think that getting the waypoints and that information when it, he was allowed to, while he was an open angler, was the wrong thing to do. Even though it was legal. I think it's frowned upon throughout the industry and throughout the veterans and other anglers to not do that. But he's trying to gain an advantage to the level that he can. That's legal. But in the long run, that issue got him disqualified. But hopefully he's learned from this, and I think he has. Hopefully he can rebrand himself and get the sponsors that he lost, because that stinks. And he can continue to be a really good angler that has put God first. And I appreciate that. I think he has a great career. I think that next year we'll see him in the mix for Angler of the Year and some wins. He's just an all-around great angler because, you know what, he's a, he's a great forward-facing sonar angler. And until something is drastically done for that, you're going to see a lot of forward-facing sonars anglers dominate within bass. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. So the, I have those questions I have for you, comment below and tell me what you think. Put them in the comments. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I will talk to you very, very soon. Thank you for everything. I really do appreciate it. Cheers.